Hello again, and welcome back. In this lesson, we will talk about the various and organ effects of hypertension in the elderly. The biggest concern about hypertension in the elderly is the organ damage that results from hypertension and provides a direct link to cardiovascular events and death. Since the mid-1980s, Non-communicable disease with cardiovascular disease being the most prevalent have overtaken infectious disease in the Philippines as the most common cause of morbidity and mortality. Based on a target organ survey among hypertensive Filipinos conducted by the Philippine Heart Association Council on Hypertension in 1996, more than half or 58% of the hypertensive population surveyed had target and organ damage. The most common organ damage seen was cardiac damage, about 45%, consisting of left ventricular hypertrophy, coronary artery disease, and heart failure, followed by kidney damage, which is about 17%, consisting of hypertensive nephropathy, including azotemia, microalbuminuria, macroalbuminuria, and stage renal disease. And lastly, brain damage, which is about 16%, consisting of transient ischemic attacks and previous stroke, whether ischemic or hemorrhagic. Another survey conducted by the Philippine Heart Association Council on Hypertension involved patients admitted to hospitals for any cause. In the study, cardiovascular disease and infectious disease were the most common disease responsible for the hospitalization of patients. Among the hospitalized patients with cardiovascular disease, hypertension was the most common risk factor or comorbidity identified, about 38.6%, followed by stroke, about 30%, then coronary artery disease, about 17%, and lastly, heart failure, about 10.4%. We will now discuss some of this end organ damage in more detail. First is cerebrovascular disease and dementia. Hypertension in the elderly is a major risk factor for both ischemic stroke and cerebral hemorrhage. Isolated systolic hypertension, or ISH, is an important component of blood pressure-related stroke risk. The benefit of blood pressure reduction for stroke risk was demonstrated in various studies. One study, the systolic hypertension in the elderly program, or SHEP, in which patients in the active treatment had reduced incidence of both ischemic by 37%, and hemorrhagic stroke by 54%. In the Perindopril Protection Against Recurrent Stroke Study, or PROGRESS, patients under antihypertensive therapy had fewer recurrent ischemic strokes of 10% to 35% and hemorrhagic stroke of 26% to 87% compared with placebo. The systolic hypertension in Europe trial, or CISUR, which comprised of patients with isolated systolic hypertension, confirmed stroke prevention with blood pressure control using nitrendipine with possible addition of enalapril, hydrochlorothiazide, or both. Patients in the aforementioned studies consisted of the early elderly between 65 to 74 years of age. In the hypertension in the very elderly trial, or HYVET, patients in the late elderly group who are older than 80 years of age with elevated systolic blood pressure were randomized to indapamide with addition of perindopril if needed, or placebo. Patients in the indapamide group had a 30% risk reduction in fatal and non-fatal stroke. It is unclear whether the benefits are related solely 
to blood pressure reduction or whether there is additional benefit conferred by the class of blood pressure medication. Although there is consistent benefit in stroke reduction when drugs were compared with placebo, there is little difference between drug classes. The prevalence of both hypertension and dementia increases with advancing age. Hypertension is an important risk factor for vascular dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Poor blood pressure control is associated with an even greater cognitive dysfunction and decline. Four randomized studies evaluated dementia as an outcome with treatment of hypertension in elderly patients. In the CCUR and PROGRESS studies, active treatment was associated with 50% and 19% reduction in dementia incidence, respectively. The study on cognition and prognosis in the elderly, or SCOPE study, compared candesartan with placebo in 70 to 80 year old patients with hypertension and found no difference in cognitive outcome between the two groups. The HIVET COG trial found a non significant 14% decrease in dementia with active treatment versus placebo. Next, we'll talk about coronary artery disease. According to the 2004 American Heart Association statistics, 83% of coronary arterial disease deaths occurred in persons older than 65 years of age. Elderly patients with hypertension have higher prevalence of myocardial infarction than elderly patients without hypertension. However, any recommendation to aggressively reduce blood pressure in high-risk patients should be tempered, particularly with regards to myocardial infarction prevention, despite the results of the recent SPRINT trials. The old dogma, the lower the better, is not always true. This is what the retrospective analysis of the International Verapamil Randolapril study or INVEST study proved. SPRINT, by definition, focused on the lowering of systolic blood pressure. However, the effects on diastolic blood pressure are unclear. This is important because it is likely that in the intensively treated cohort, not only was systolic blood pressure reduced, but also diastolic blood pressure. Considering the evidence demonstrating a J-shaped relationship between diastolic blood pressure and increased risk for cardiovascular disease in some cohort, caution should be exercised whenever diastolic blood pressure is reduced to less than 70 mm mercury. This is further supported by findings from a secondary analysis of the INVEST trial, in which approximately 23,000 patients with coronary artery disease and hypertension were studied and were found to have higher risk of all cause death and cardiac events when diastolic blood pressure was low, less than 70 to 80 mm mercury. The INVEST trial was designed to investigate two hypertension treatment strategies in patients with coronary artery disease. The study included a large number of individuals older than 80 years old and a secondary analysis of this group was performed to assess the effects of strict blood pressure control which reported a J-shaped mortality curve with stricter blood pressure control. It is unclear though whether the J-shaped mortality curve from this study is attributable to severe end-stage disease alone or whether iatrogenesis plays a significant role. However, the data should cause one to be cautious in lowering blood pressures to below 130 over 70 mm mercury in older patients, including those at high risk of adverse cardiovascular outcomes. Next, let's discuss chronic kidney disease. Hypertension and aging both impact renal function. Elderly patients are more likely to have chronic kidney disease, usually defined by a measured estimated 
glomerular filtration rate or EGFR, a strong independent predictor of decline in kidney function among older patients with isolated systolic hypertension. The aging kidney is characterized by progressive development of glomerulosclerosis and interstitial fibrosis. This is associated with the decline in glomerular filtration rate and reduction of other homeostatic mechanisms. Age-associated decline in activity of membrane sodium-potassium and calcium adenosine triphosphate pumps lead to an excess of intracellular calcium and sodium. This results in an increase in vasoconstriction and vascular resistance. Increased salt sensitivity characterized by an increase in blood pressure in response to sodium overload occurs in older and obese subjects as a result of the limited renal ability of these patients to excrete sodium overload. And lastly, let's discuss hypertension and age-associated retinal changes. The prevalence of retinal lesions increases with higher systolic blood pressure but not necessarily with diastolic blood pressure. Persistent blood pressure elevation produces intimal thickening, medial hyperplasia, and hyaline degeneration or sclerosis. Aging itself is also associated with most of these changes, which make grading of retinal pathology in older patients less reliable versus younger patients. Hypertension is an important risk factor for retinal artery occlusion and non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. The final stages of retinal disease are caused by disruption of the retina blood barrier and lipid exudates in severely elevated blood pressure. That's all for now. See you in the next lecture when we discuss the management of hypertension in the elderly.